What's up guys, David Land here bringing you another die-cast review. This time we are taking a look at a 118th scale Panos DP01. This is the Champ Car World Series Show Car from the 2007 Champ Car World Series season, the final full season of the Champ Car World Series. Though there was one race held in 2008, the Long Beach Grand Prix, won by Will Power, and ironically enough, they produced a diecast for it on this mold. Uh, but speaking of this mold, let me tell you guys, um, these cars have skyrocketed, uh, skyrocketed in price re in recent years. Uh, in fact, just yesterday I saw a Paul Tracy uh, 2007 car or 2008. I can't remember which uh, which year it was from, but it it went for a hundred dollars. It was a buy it now auction. Uh, they just put it up. Hundred dollars went almost immediately. Uh, so these are skyrocketing in price right now. I was very lucky to get this car for uh, just under the price that you would pay for a new green light indie car. So I was very happy to get it. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of die cast. I've wanted a DP01 for a very long time. In fact, the car I really want is the Neil Johnny car, the Red Bull, which I've seen go for you know hundreds of dollars unfortunately so I decided to um, to uh, bring my uh, bring my expectations back just a little bit and pick up the generic uh, champ car version of this which is great because I actually saw this car running in the generic champ car livery at the uh, 2014 SVRA Indy Vintage weekend in fact I took a video of it hopefully the card will be coming up in the corner right now uh, I took some laps of the oval so it was really cool to see a car and well it was interesting and kind of funny and ironic at the same time that a car in full champ car livery uh, was running around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, that, that, was some, that was a sight to behold, that was for sure. Um, but an absolutely beautiful car. I'm very happy to bring it into the collection. Uh, like I said, they only produced uh, one year, uh, one full year of these die casts to coincide with the one full year that the Panos DP01 actually ran as an Indy car in competition. Uh, but they actually produced a, quite a big selection of cars. Um, Forsyth Racing, Newman Haas Racing, uh, Team Australia, Walker Racing, uh, Minardi Team USA had, I think, all three of their cars made. So um, there was a lot of these uh, DP01 diecasts made. They're just harder and harder to come by as they, the stock starts to dry up. And, uh, you know, obviously people want these cars because they were the last season of the Champ Car World Series, and a lot of people were fans of that series. So uh, it includes engine detail. We'll be taking a look at that. I don't think it's going to be very good act um, very good engine detail, but we'll have to uh, investigate that. Uh, I think this is my first die cast I've bought that has engine detail. Champ Car WS, that does not go anywhere anymore. I hate to break it to everybody. Uh, green light collectibles. On the uh, on the box there, champ car test car right there on the uh, the base, which you do get a base with this car. Uh, in fact, uh, both the Indy Racing League diecast and the champ car diecast uh, of this era came with a base, uh, but it's easily unscrewable. So we'll be uh, taking a look at the car without the base on it. Limited edition 118. You can see the uh, DP01 in there, and maybe my face over there. The champ car logo. Then you got some stuff here on the back. Uh, champ car. The Champ Car logo, which was the first time they weren't called the Bridgestone Presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. It was just the Champ Car World Series, which was easier. This is Roberto Moreno testing the car. Uh, I think that photo is from Sebring. Uh, he tested the car throughout the 2006 season uh, in preparation for 2007. Then you've got the Champ Car DP01 specifications, uh, the constructor. Is technically not Panos, it's actually Elan Motorsports Technology, but that is technically Panos. Uh, you can see the, the weight, transmission, wheelbase, length, width, suspension, brakes, engine, was a, which was a Cosworth XFE 2.65 liter V8 turbo, uh, 750 horsepower, uh, I think that's width push to pass, I think they were pr pushing out more uh, like uh, 600 horsepower. Uh, regularly. Lubricant, Roche from uh, Roche Friends, uh, the spark plugs were Bosch, the tires and wheels were Bridgestone Potenzas, Potenzas with BBS cast magnesium wheels which are still used today in IndyCar racing and the instruments were from Pi. Um, I was gonna say real quick, um, IndyCar supposedly wants to bring a, a look uh, cars that look like the DP01 back but frankly I would rather them use the soundtrack, which was the old Cosworth XFE 2.6 liter V8s, but um, 
Magreen technology, I guess. And there's the back of the uh, the Champ car. Actually, a pretty interesting rear wing. Uh, we don't get a whole lot of stuff produced in uh, in road course trim for Indy cars. As you can see, uh, there's some stuff about McDonald's and the Golden Arches. They uh, produced several McDonald's cars, including a 164, which I do own. Then you got Speed Gear, which I think distributed most of the Champ Car diecast, even when they did the Action Racing Reynards. And then uh, you got Champ Car Products, which doesn't exist anymore, and ChampCarStuff.com, as Derek Daly used to say on the broadcasts. So, uh, let's get this thing open uh, out of its box. I already cut the tape because um, apparently it was already unsealed. So we'll take a look at this uh, once I get it out of the box, and uh, I can't wait to look at it. Really quick, I wanted to show off what this car looks like in this uh, in this case since um, not a lot of people are going to see it, and I don't know the next time I'll be uh, doing a review on a green light car from this era. Uh, as you can see, this is actually kind of similar to No Rev, um, like if you remember the RS Spider reviews, you can see the uh, DP01 Champ car. Uh, it's kind of uh, obscured by the um, by the plastic there. You got the Champ car logo back there. You got the die cast on the uh, Bridgestone Reds. Then you've got the Champ Car test car die cast, and the uh, the engine cowling is held on there by uh, some uh, rubber bands. And there's your uh, three screws to get the car out. So I'm going to do that. Going to do some unscrewing, and uh, we will reconvene. So through the power of editing, welcome to one day later. Uh, I had some problems with the base of this car. I think I ironically said in the last segment right before uh, I signed off uh, that it's just three screws it'll be really easy to get off of there well I was correct for two of those screws the third one got jammed in the plastic base uh, and also in the car so I was unable to separate the car from the base so uh, some power tools and pliers later we have gotten the car off of its base thankfully uh, I was able to get the screw out without having to ruin the plastic or the car so that's excellent, awesome, and all good. So let's take a look at this uh, fabulous Champ Car. Um, I must say, uh, when it's in the box, I don't think it looks particularly great. Um, but once you get it out of its box, um, this is just a stunning, stunning car. I think Greenlight did an unbelievable job with this car. Uh, just, it's very wonderful. And I can kind of see why uh, the aftermarket prices are so high uh, for this car because it is just absolutely a wonderful mold as you can see you've got the Bridgestone red alternate tires the softer compound uh, which uh, you IndyCar fans uh, from these days will uh, recognize because of course uh, IndyCar uses a similar system for their tires uh, but uh, I really do like this angle of the car I can't wait to show this one off um, closer up because I think the from the rear this car looks the best um, in period, I wasn't a huge fan of the DP01 uh, when, it, when it came out. I thought Champ Car was going a little too far in the Formula One direction uh, with their look. I didn't think it looked particularly like an Indy car should look. Uh, but uh, as the years have gone on, uh, I think this car has aged very, very well. Uh, particularly when you see a lot of modern race cars with all their silly fins and silly aerodynamic devices all over it. This is a very clean design, and uh, it just looks really fantastic uh, nowadays, again, given the, the current state of auto racing in the world, really. Uh, the, 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 the design, easy for me to say, the design of this car uh, is, um, or the paint scheme on this car, is designed by Troy Lee Designs. Uh, that's just a little factoid, uh, just off the off the bat uh, to show off. But the cool thing about these uh, DPO1s is something that Greenlight did in the mid two thousand or the late two thousands that they don't do anymore uh, is engine detail. You just take the engine cover off, and it's sealed in by these uh, these little pins here, which go if it would focus. It wants to focus on the champ car, and I don't blame it. Uh, but it uh, it's held in there by these little pins here, which. Uh, go on the engine. So let's take a look at the engine detail. It's not fantastic. There are no logos or anything. This uh, right here is supposed to be the Cosworth XFE engine. Uh, eh. <laughs> you do get some spring detail and that looks like a uh, some sort of an electronics bit. There's not a lot painted in the engine bay which is a little bit disappointing but you do get some interesting suspension detail which is probably the best part of it. 
Uh, what I didn't realize was these uh, these parts here on the front and rear wings, uh, not in that order, obviously, that I'm showing you, but uh, this is actually blue. I have always thought it was uh, black, because I always considered the Champ Car colors black, uh, silver, and orange, but that's blue. So it's kind of interesting to see blue on this car. Um, I don't think that's the way I saw it race at the um, Indy Vintage. Uh, and then you've got some sponsors here, Sherwin-Williams, Roche Franz, uh, McDonald's, and Performance uh, Something Breaks. It's kind of hard to read there. Of course, the Champ Car logo, actually not a bad logo. Um, I think the, uh, the Champ Car World Series, uh, despite the fact that they um, were kind of obscure, not a lot of people knew about them, uh, I think they were really good marketers. I think they were really good at branding themselves and uh, getting their message out, or at least uh, showing off what they what they were all about. Uh, these beautiful rims, these BBS rims, are actually still in use today. In fact, the Andretti Autosport team uses them in IndyCar racing. A little known fact on that one, um, because they paint them black, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, Dale Coyne also uses them. Got the Champ Car logos here up front. The little Champ Car Chevron, Bridgestone, Bosch, Cosworth, the uh, 07 for 2007, which of course is the year that this car is from, and the cool American flag design as well. Also Sherwin-Williams is on the front end plate as well. Now, you heard me mention 2007, and of course the number of this car is 07. Which is interesting because when I went on to the base, check the base out of this car, um, these old green lights had DIN numbers. And I have 007 of 750 ever produced of this champ car. So I've got 07, car number 07, year 07. Um, that was incredibly lucky. And that's the reason this car will probably never leave my collection because not many people can say they have a door number DIN for a champ car. And that's what I do, or I guess a wing number DIN. But anyway, um, here's the big weakness with these champ cars, and it's the driver figure. Now, it's pretty nicely detailed. You can see uh, they did model the Hans device, which is very interesting. And there's also some cool paint, uh, paint work on the helmet, the Champ Car logos, and of course the Champ Car website, which is no longer in service, champcar.ws. But you may notice that this uh, this driver uh, looks like he's about 12. I guess he's Max Verstappen. They're supposed to have Max Verstappen driving this car. I mean, he's even in the correct colors for his country, but uh, yeah, very, very small uh, driver. Uh, not a 118 scale driver. Uh, this is more like a 124 scale driver, I would say, in a 118 scale car. Um, so a lot of people I've noticed um, who customize these cars take the driver figure out, whatever. I think they did correct this problem for the two 2008 releases that they had, which were the uh, 2007 and 2008 uh, Long Beach Grand Prix winners. Um, because I know I saw a review that Racing Nation TV did uh, of his 2007 Long Beach winner, and uh, the driver figure, which is Sebastian Bourdais, is correctly sized. So, uh, just for these uh, these first few Champ cars that they made, well, most of the Champ cars they made, they have the uh, the weird driver figure that's really small. Uh, but I do really like this car. Um, I wish they had. Re I mean, it's weird because I think the open wheel merger was ultimately a good thing for the sport between Champ Car and IndyCar, or the IRL, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it did make uh, make it so that we only had one year of these DPO1s out from Greenlight. And I think that's a crying shame, because this is really a beautiful mold, uh, and I wish it would have been utilized a bit more, but obviously I understand the circumstances in which they weren't. Um, I would highly recommend picking this car up uh, if you can get one. Uh, it doesn't matter the paint scheme, honestly. It's a beautiful die cast, and, a, and it's obscure enough that people will see it in your collection and go, what on earth is that? You know, I think it's a really, really cool die cast. And if you can't find one of these for a reasonable, pr reasonable price, you can get it in 164 scale. Greenlight did two of these in 164 scale. In fact, they released them fairly recently, uh, 2013 and 2014. This is the Sebastian Bourdais uh, Champ Car from 2007, which they released in their Road Racers assortment. Uh, beautiful car. 
uh, and I would highly recommend getting this one. They also released a uh, blacked out version in their Black Bandit series, which doesn't have any Bridgestone branding or uh, Champ Car branding. Uh, but I, again, I can't recommend this car highly enough. I'm very, very happy to add, add, finally add one of these cars to my collection. And it's even better that it's the car that I actually saw race in real life. The only DPO one I've seen race in real life. Um, so it makes me very happy to have this in the collection and it looks fantastic on my shelf. I think Greenlight did an absolutely fantastic job with this car. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Kart, Champ Car, and IndyCar car videos. Uh, obviously this is part of my huge passion for the sport, uh, so uh, you will be expecting a lot more videos coming down the pipe. In, in fact, I've got another car over there to film very shortly, uh, which is a, about 10 years older than this car, uh, but no less beautiful. So thank you guys so much for watching again, and we'll see you in the next video. So